Good morning, congregation. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. Uh, I want to invite you to join me in a call to worship this morning, which you will see on your screen. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing to him a psalm of praise. Would you join me in our opening hymn, Rejoice, ye pure in heart. <laughs>
Now, would you join me in affirming what we believe together as Christians using the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn is All Hail the Power of Jesus' name. Let's sing that together. Children, I want to just bring a, a message to you this morning. I, uh, I I just miss you so much, and 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 want you to know your pastor loves you and Jesus loves you. I want to talk a little bit about this altar t- with you today. Um, this is what we call Ascension Day, where we celebrate after Jesus rose from the grave and was with the apostles, his followers, several weeks. He ascended into heaven. They watched him ascend to the heaven to be at the right hand of the Father. And then he promised after he left that uh, he would have the Father send the Holy Spirit to be with us to overcome fear. So what does that mean? Well, in the the Old Testament, David um, said that um, uh, when he was watching his father's sheep, and um, uh, a, a bear 
and, a, and a, a lion came after the sheep, God gave him the strength to uh, fight them off. And uh, then when he was going to go against Goliath, a giant, uh, King Saul said, well, how can you fight Goliath? And he said that um, the same, that God gave him the power to fight the bear, and the lion, he would give David power to fight the giant. So we have the Holy Spirit just like David. Uh, God's given us the Holy Spirit to live within us as followers of Jesus to have the power to overcome anything we're afraid of. Just like David, if, you, if, if you're afraid of something, remember God is bigger. God is stronger, and he's with you. So for David, that lion and that bear might have looked a little scary in that giant Goliath, but he remembered that God's Holy Spirit was with him to overcome fear. Uh, if you watch the sermon uh, in a little while, if you stay with your parents, there's a video clip uh, about a lion chasing a bear. And if you hang with me, you'll see what happens to help that bear cub overcome that lion. So congregation and children, this weekend we're uh, not only celebrating Ascension uh, Sunday, but we're celebrating Memorial Day weekend, and we give thanks uh, as uh, a church, we give thanks as a nation, uh, remembering those who gave their lives uh, in defense and in service for our nation. And so we give God thanks, and we, we're we very grateful um, as a nation for, for in the memory of those men and women. Um, the the, the uh, bells, or the choir, is going to uh, do an offertory about grace. Uh, thank you for your continuing support in giving to God and his church. You have been so faithful and we thank you. Get ready now to hear this offertory.
this Sunday we're, we're, we're focusing both on the ascension of the Lord and uh, the promise of the Holy Spirit. This is the second a part of a two-part series on, on the Holy Spirit. And um, we have the ascension uh, reading in the first part of Acts, but we also have uh, uh, it in the last chapter of, of Luke. And I turn to the Luke version now, the 24th chapter, beginning with verse 44. He, Jesus, said to them, This is what I told you while I'm still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, the apostles, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. I have to say to you this morning, um, I I don't like fear. I I especially don't like fear when it paralyzes me. Uh, Wisdom, uh, discernment, caution are one thing. But fear for me is is something else. Um, The apostles knew fear. Uh, They all scattered on the day that Jesus was crucified. And in the next 50 days after the crucifixion, Jesus rose from the dead. The apostles watched him ascend towards heaven upward. And on Pentecost, they received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus had promised them to give them power against the challenges that they would face so they could be as witnesses. I want to say to you this morning a few things about the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit that enables us as Christians to overcome fear. First, it was clear in the Old Testament that the Spirit, God's presence, was given to leaders to give them courage. For instance, we hear the words of Joshua when he was getting to, of the Lord to Joshua, when he was getting ready uh, to be called to lead the people into the promised land. From the first chapter of Joshua, the fifth verse, the Lord says, Just as I have been with Moses, I will be with you, Joshua. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and courageous. So we see in the Old Testament the promise of the Spirit, God's presence, to be with heroes and leaders. But on the day of Pentecost, we see a shift. The promise of the Spirit wasn't just for leaders and heroes. It was for all believers. After Peter on Pentecost preached the gospel about Jesus to the crowd in Jerusalem. This is what followed his sermon from, from, from the book of Acts, the second chapter. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord God, Lord our God, will call. So this is 
the Pentecost promise, that the promise of the indwelling spirit to help and give us power to overcome fear, it's not just for certain people. It's a gift, it's a promise for all believers in Jesus Christ. Second, concerning the power of the Spirit to overcome fear, remember on the day of Pentecost, uh, the pouring out of the Spirit of the church, these apostles not only experienced this outpouring of the Spirit, but they had also witnessed the resurrection before that and then the ascension. Can you imagine these men who on Good Friday felt everything was defeated now saw things from the perspective of the resurrection, the ascension, and the upcoming of the Holy Spirit. They, they saw the power of God and the hope that brings in looking to victory. Later on, um, the Apostle Paul writes this profound promise to the entire church in Romans 8. He says this, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. Paul is affirming that the Spirit of God who dwells within us as Christians is larger and stronger than any adversary, any problem, any challenge that we're going to face. After all, it's the same. I mean, this is, this is our profound words. It is the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now dwells in we who have put our faith in Jesus. I, w- I want to uh, show a video clip. Uh, uh, and, and the video clip is about a, a young bear cub that gets separated from, from his mother. And um, a, a mountain lion um, sizes this cub up, up and the chase is on. And the chase goes on for a while. And... Um, the, the bear cub falls into the river, and the, the mountain lion chases him uh, down the river. And finally, the, the cub gets out of the water and has no other choice but to face the predator, to face his adversary. And um, watch what happens at the end. Young Bear Club had Mama Bear in the end behind him. The Bible reminds us that the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells with us and in us. I mean, if we size up what we're facing, sometimes in our own power, it can be pretty large, pretty scary. It might paralyze us 
in, in, in fear. However, when we size up the challenge we're facing against the size and power of God, his presence, we will not be overcome by fear. The Apostle Paul adds in the same eighth chapter of Romans this affirmation, one of my favorite scriptures also, 15th verse. The spirit you receive does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. The bear cub had mama bear behind him. We have the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead in us and with us because we are children of God. Third, concerning the power of the Spirit over fear, the apostles received the outpouring of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost, which brought to these ordinary men, these ordinary folks, the courage to do the things we read in the book of Acts. These men endured persecution. They endured injustice. God didn't take the challenges out of their life that they had to face, but instead he gave them the power of the Spirit to persevere and to stand in the face of opposition and difficulties as witnesses of Jesus Christ. Peter, who had we all know had run away in fear at the foot of the cross and then preached in boldness about Jesus on the day of Pentecost. Later on in the New Testament in 1 Peter, he he writes these words of faith. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him standing firm in your faith. It's pretty pertinent to the video clip where the lion was coming after the bear cub. The bear cub stood his ground and, and, and mama bear was behind him. Uh, the apostle Paul talks about our enemy like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour and he says, resist him, stand firm in the faith. All of us, all of us, including this pastor, uh, will face the temptation of fear from time to time. The lion, uh, the, 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 the devil as a lion, does prowl around seeking to move us into fear. I don't like fear. Uh, Fear is not the same thing as discernment and wisdom and caution. Fear can paralyze. Fear can make you want to run away and hide. Fear can cause you to lose all hope. Fear can cause you to see the mountain lion in front of you rather than the power of God that's in you and behind you. Um, Fear can, can just crush our witness for Jesus Christ, for people are, around us that are looking for hope and faith in the midst of the challenges of life. Today, on this Sunday before Pentecost, remember that the Holy Spirit has been given to us, all believers, all Christians, young and old, to glorify Jesus and to remind his church of everything that he has told us. And over and over again, Jesus told his apostles, has told his church, do not be afraid. And he told them he was going to send the power of the Holy Spirit to to be with them. And Jesus, when we feel like our church is shaken or we're shaken, I remember those words Jesus 
assured the apostles that the gates of hell will not prevail against Christ's church. In the midst of this epidemic, you and I seek to bear witness to the one who is larger and greater than the virus. We seek to bear witness to Jesus, our faith in him, who has a way and has promised us that he can take the evil that comes against us and use it for his good. You and I seek to bear witness to the faith we have in the one who has died for us, the one who has risen from the dead for us, and the one who now has ascended and is at the right hand of the Father praying for us. We seek to bear witness in our faith in the midst of the challenges that we're going through even right now. We seek to bear witness to Jesus Christ, who the Bible calls the Lion of Judah. who He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And we remember that not only has he ascended and is as the King and the Lord, Lord of lords at the right hand of the Father, but he has sent the Spirit, the same Spirit that has raised Jesus from the dead to live within us, to give us boldness and courage and faith to witness about him. We're going to close today with the great ascension, uh, looking to the hope we have in the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Our closing hymn is crown him with many crowns. Let's sing this great hymn of faith together. and sisters in Christ, thank you for tuning in to this service. We have so much to be thankful for. Uh, Christ is at the right hand of the Father praying for us. He has given us the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit, uh, which is more powerful than any conflict or challenge or enemy we're going to face. And uh, this weekend we do Uh, We are grateful, a grateful nation for those who've served and given their lives. Tomorrow, Monday, Memorial Day, 
there will be a uh, virtual Memorial Day service. Uh, we'd love to have you tune in. It'll be, uh, uh, Tori will be sending out an access and, and uh, you'll be able to tune in to that and, and uh, give thanks uh, on, on that Memorial Day. So let me bless you now as I send you forth. Um, may the blessing of God the Father, the Son, may the blessing and promise and power of the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always that you may be strong witnesses for Jesus Christ. In his name we, we offer this. Amen.